I'm a single mother of my eight-year-old boy, Mark. When this happened, he was five and I was 27. I have my own house that was passed down to me from my grandparents. It's in the quiet side of town with a lot of older people, and I still live here with Mark today. It was Christmas time, and I was out with Mark shopping. I was doing my Christmas shopping for my family. Mark and I went to the mall, including a few clothing stores and a hardware store where I bought a gift for my dad. After all the shopping was done, I took Mark to McDonald's to get him some burgers and ice cream. Afterwards, we left the mall through the south exit, and here, we bumped into a mall Santa standing outside. He waved at us and said the usual Santa stuff. He then knelt down to get to Mark's level and asked him what he wanted for Christmas. Mark led my hand closer to the Santa, and I allowed it because he seemed like a normal, nice mall Santa. Mark said he wanted a Nintendo Switch, which ironically was what I was planning on buying him for Christmas. The Santa laughed and said, if you're good, maybe you'll get it, while looking up at me and winking. I smiled, and then he stood up and started complimenting me, saying to Mark, your mother's a looker, Mark, you know that? And Mark laughed, even though he didn't know what that meant. I still smiled. Then we had a couple minutes worth of seemingly friendly adult conversation about the holiday mayhem and such. The guy said he worked for the mall. I regrettably mentioned the stress of being a single mom during Christmas is unfathomable. And then I made a joke about needing Santa's help. Then the Santa made what I thought was an innocent joke, saying, Mark, have you ever heard the song, I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus? And Mark shook his head yes. Then he leaned in towards me with his cheek, implying he wanted me to kiss his cheek. I was going to give him an innocent little peck on the fake beard, but as I leaned in, he turned his head and tried doing that old trick where he kisses you on the lips instead. I moved my face away in time. The way he did it was so creepy and aggressive too. He looked at me and started doing the Santa kind of laugh, but there was nothing jolly about it. I said, come on, Mark, and we started walking away. He yelled, Merry Christmas, and that was the last thing I heard him say. As we drove away past the back exit of the mall, I noticed he wasn't there in front of the entrance anymore. I wish I took that into consideration as to what may have happened next. We got home, and after bringing everything inside, I locked the door, and Mark and I started to watch a Christmas movie. Our wholesome time together was then interrupted. My doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting anyone, and it was late for any kind of door-to-door -door people. I told Mark to keep watching as I went to go answer the door. I said, who is it, through the door and a man's voice on the other side said, It's Santa. My heart dropped. I said, If you're the mall Santa, please go away, or I'm calling the cops. He replied, You dropped something out of your bag, miss. I'm just looking to return it. I replied, What did I drop? He replied, I don't know, miss. I'm not looking to be nosy, but if you open the door, I can hand it to you. I repeated myself that I wanted him to leave now. I then decided to call the mall management office of the mall to report this. But the man on the phone said they don't officially hire any mall Santas at this mall, and that whoever's dressing as Santa is doing it on their own accord. With that bit of information, I felt incredibly unsafe. I went back to be with Mark, but my mind was elsewhere now. I felt this sickly, worried feeling in my gut. I made an excuse to get up again after a few minutes. I went to the kitchen out of earshot of the TV. I raised the blinds to the kitchen window. I couldn't see anything out there, being that the kitchen light was on and it was pitch black outside. But I heard a man yelling, ho, ho, ho. He was probably out there watching me at that very moment, looking out the window. I had no choice but to call the police and report that I was followed by a man dressed as Santa. I told Mark to keep watching the movie, and I spoke to the police outside. They took a report and were on their way. The police having come made me feel just a little better. A few nights later, though... My doorbell rang again, around the same time, if not a little later. Mark was already asleep tonight. I was in the living room watching a show. I turned off the TV and went upstairs to my room, which is connected to Mark's room. The doorbell didn't ring again, but I never went back downstairs that night. It wasn't until the next day when I was leaving the house that I found the note taped to my front door. It was typed out and printed. This is a picture of the note, and it said... I'll just be blunt. I'm sure you can guess who this is. I didn't mean to scare you the other night. I just had a long shift. And when a pretty lady talks to you after pretending to be Santa for six hours, hormones kind of go crazy. You and your son are the cutest things ever, and I'd love to one day be a part of your family. You can't pretend you didn't feel the connection when we spoke the other night. 
I already know where you live. Now I just need your number. Feel free to shoot me a text whenever, and maybe we can plan something one day. Sorry, I know this may seem creepy or a bit much, but I'm the kind of guy where if I see something I like, I go after it. Anyway, happy holidays if we don't speak soon. Here's my number. Best Ted. I wanted to crumple this up, but I took a picture of it, called the police again, and gave this to them. Since it had his number on it, the police could work with that. They said I'd be hearing from someone when action was taken, and that following Monday, I got a call from, I assume, a detective telling me that the man would not be contacting me anymore, and if he did, to let him know. I never heard from that creep again. I assume the police threatened to arrest him if there was any further contact. This is a short but scarring story nonetheless from my early childhood. I grew up in an average middle class home in the suburbs. My sister and I were huge fans of Christmas as kids. I had to be like six years old when this happened because we had just moved to our new house. This is one of my earliest memories in life that I remember vividly just because of the gravity of it. On Christmas Eve, I would always have trouble sleeping even as a young kid just due to anticipation. I would stay up really late playing video games in my room on my old box TV. I'd play until I just fell asleep from exhaustion. This night in question, I was playing a Star Wars game for the PS1, and when I had to go to the bathroom, I turned the volume down low and quietly snuck out of my room because I knew my mom would get mad if she heard me sneaking around on Christmas Eve night. I snuck to the upstairs bathroom, and when I was done, I was quietly going back to my room when I heard the sound of the tree rustling around downstairs. My first instinct was to think, Santa, I started tiptoeing down the stairs until I got to the bottom. The sound of the rustling pine needles was louder now. I peeked around the bottom wall of the stairway into the living room. There were no lights on, except for someone holding a flashlight. I could see only the person's legs as they were bent over behind the tree. There was a black bag on the floor, and this random adult man came out from behind the tree and looked at me. He looked at me and put his pointer finger up to his mouth, and he made a shushing motion with his lips. He whispered, yes, I'm Santa. I was old enough and smart enough to know that wasn't what the Santa I grew up knowing looked like. I started screaming for my mom and dad as loud as I could. I remember the man started freaking out, deciding whether or not to take the bag he filled with our gifts, and he ended up running away to the front door. I don't remember if he had to unlock it or if it was already unlocked or not. I just remember him leaving through the front door and seconds later my parents running down the stairs. I'm sure I screamed there was a man in here, and them seeing the black bag on the floor filled with our would have been stolen gifts proved that. Here's where my memories started getting fuzzy, so I had to ask my parents what happened next. But my dad told me he went outside in his slippers and ran all over the place ready to kill someone. Half the ornaments on the tree were taken off and in the bag. What kind of sick, evil person steals people's sentimental Christmas ornaments? According to my dad, the method in which the man broke in was the back door, which it appeared he yanked open with a crowbar due to the chipped wood. A house a few blocks away had also fallen victim to this and it was on the news. It was most definitely the same guy. I don't remember much from when I was six, but this is a memory that most of it still sticks in my brain like it was only a few years ago. It was December 2020. My fiancé and I bought a house together a few years ago. It's a cute house in a decent neighborhood, a nice area to raise a family. That's why what happened two years ago was all the more shocking and disgusting. We know all of our neighbors, both our next door neighbors and the three closest neighbors across the street. Everyone is friendly enough, but you truly never know the skeletons hidden in someone's closet. Our neighbor Paul to the right always seemed nice the few times we'd speak but he never really spoke too much. I'd see him outside almost every day, either coming or leaving for, I'm assuming, work, though I never knew what he did for a living. At this time, I hadn't seen the guy in a few days, and his car hadn't moved from his driveway. Obviously, that in of itself isn't any cause for alarm. All of the neighbors, including Paul, had their lights up already. I found it interesting how Paul, a single man in his 40s, would put lights up. I actually found it kind of nice. I was late to the party putting my Christmas lights and decorations up outside one night. While doing so, 
I noticed Paul's Christmas lights out of nowhere started flickering like crazy. All of them, not just one strip of lights. It looked like it could have just been faulty wiring or some electrical glitch. The next day, I left for work around 10. I noticed again Paul's car was still in the driveway. I also noticed all the blinds in his house were still closed. Even when I got back from work, the blinds were all closed. But his Christmas lights were on, so he was definitely home. I joked with my fiancé that he must have been on some kind of hibernation. Later that night, my fiancé came inside and told me of Paul's Christmas lights acting up. I went outside and it was the exact same thing that was happening the night before. The flickering wasn't happening in a way that would appear that he programmed it that way. It was happening in a very spastic, glitchy sort of way. So I figured I'd be nice and go let him know, and also see if he's okay since I hadn't seen him. I knocked on the door, and when there was no answer, I rang. All the blinds were closed and I couldn't tell if the lights were on or not. When there was no answer, I rang one more time. Finally the door opened and Paul greeted me. I let him know about his flickering lights, which I just noticed weren't flickering anymore. I promised him I wasn't making it up. He said he wasn't aware of that and thanked me. I asked if he was alright as I hadn't seen him in a while. He said he was just feeling under the weather. He was acting a bit off. Then I heard something from inside the house. At first I thought I was imagining it, but it sounded like a child screaming, screaming for help. Paul didn't have any kids. I was about to ask him, did you hear that? But on the spot I decided not to. I said goodbye and walked back to my house. Then I told my fiancé to call the police right now. I think Paul has a child in his house. Her reaction was literally, what did you say? I said, I think Paul kidnapped a child. So I called the police and said I think I heard a child screaming inside my neighbor's house. My neighbor who doesn't have kids and hasn't been leaving his house the past week or two. I asked to keep who made the call anonymous, though I knew Paul wouldn't be so stupid as to not know it was me who made the call. Sure enough, the police arrived and entered his house on exigency, and when I heard what they found, I was appalled. There was a young boy locked in the basement. He had been locked down there for four days. The boy had been kidnapped from a completely different town. As far as the flickering lights, the boy was a genius and somehow found a way from the basement to flicker the Christmas lights as an attempt to call for help and get someone's attention outside, probably whenever he saw someone through one of the blocked off basement windows. I reckon he saw his chance to call for help when someone, me, was at the front door. Clearly a very smart kid with great survival instincts. I'm glad he was reunited with his family. I don't want to know what was done to him, but I hope he lives a normal life and has put this behind him. Knowing how serious of a crime child kidnapping is, Paul won't be getting out of prison anytime soon. I was home alone one weekend, so my girlfriend Jenny came over to spend the weekend with me. It was the middle of December, and Christmas festivities were in full swing. Jenny wanted to watch Christmas movies tonight, so we ordered food, drank wine, and sat by the Christmas tree in the living room watching Christmas movies. We started with the Polar Express, then we started watching Elf. We ran out of wine, so I decided I'd run to the liquor store down the block to get more. It would only take 10 minutes anyway. It was a Saturday night, so they were open later. The usual cashier was working, and I got stuck in a conversation with him like I always do whenever I go there. Mid-conversation with him, I felt my phone vibrating in my pocket. I checked my phone to see it was Jenny. I interrupted the cashier, saying one sec, and I picked up. Jenny sounded scared, saying she keeps hearing noises from below the living room. That would mean the crawl space. I told her it's fine, there's nothing down there. She asked me to stay on the phone with her until I got back, so I did. I walked the five minute walk back home and Jenny was still on the couch. She had the movie paused still, saying that she was listening for sounds. When I asked her if she heard any other sounds, she said no. She asked what if there's an animal down there. I told her that's not possible as there's no openings from anywhere outside. I opened the wine bottle and we continued to watch the movie. It wasn't long after that we both heard a distinct thud type of sound from below us. From the crawl space. I looked at Jenny and she looked at me. She was right, there was something down there. I said, oh shit, there might actually be an animal down there. Once again, we paused the movie and I went to the closet with the attic door inside. I grabbed the flashlight on the ledge and went down into the crawl space. I stayed by the crawl space door and just did a quick scan of the place. There are a million boxes down there, so a small animal could have been hiding anywhere. 
It smelled like piss in there, which pretty much confirmed that there was something down there. I'm not an exterminator or pest control, so there was nothing I could do about it. I told my parents about it in the family group chat and told my dad he'd have to call pest control tomorrow. Then, as I was climbing back up the stairs, I heard something from across the crawl space. I don't know what it was, but something moved. I got scared that some animal was going to run at me, so I hurried up the stairs and shut the door. There wasn't much else we could do now except just go back to the living room and finish watching the movie. After Elf ended, we went to my room and eventually went to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night having to pee really badly and with a throbbing headache. I got up and opened my bedroom door and looked down into the dark hallway. At the end of the hallway, I saw a person's silhouette. I almost screamed, but instead I closed the door quietly and locked it. I heard footsteps coming down the hallway. And then the doorknob turned, and someone tried opening the door. And then a deep, hoarse-sounding voice on the other side said, Hello? That was when Jenny started to scream. She had been woken up by my getting up, and she heard the voice too. I would have tried to calm her down, but I was scared shitless myself. I did hear footsteps walk away from the door, and so I called 911. Waiting for the cops felt like a millennium. All I know is when the cops got here, there was no one else in this house. Whoever it was left. The smell of piss in the crawl space wasn't my imagination, there was literally a puddle of that person's piss on the ground, which is pretty disturbing because that would suggest that he had been down there for a while. While it was likely a homeless squatter, that didn't make it any less horrifying. My family didn't even believe it at first. I've never forgotten to lock the door ever again.